up, everybody? Welcome to the first ever episode of the Sports Show Feed. I am AJ Rhino, my co host, Buffalo K. Hey, what's up? What's up, people? Well, I gotta pause this music, it's so loud. Better fix your camera. There's everybody. <laughs> what's going on, everybody? Sorry, a little delay there in my uh, transition, but we got it now. You good? All good? Yeah, no, I'm good now. We're good. We're good. We're good. All right. First ever episode, everybody. So bear with us while we kind of adjust and make necessary changes to make sure everything is great and and, and in working order. So, uh, Kate, why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself? All right. Uh, well, you guys all know me. I am Buffalo K, a.k.a. The Accountant. Uh, I didn't give myself that name. It just kind of happened. But <laughs> I'll go with it. Um, yeah, no, a little bit of a different format today. Um, you know, you guys know me just from sniping cards today. We're going to sit and talk, uh, everything football from Madden through the NFL fantasy, the whole deal. So it should Hell be, yeah. uh, this should be good. So thank you. Kay. I am AZ Rhino. Um, don't have a fancy nickname like the accountant over here, <laughs> but, uh, pre- pretty much, uh, diehard sports fan, love, uh, football, baseball, um, this has been a passion of mine to kind of start off a talk show of some sort. So Kay and I are going to give a give it a run, and hopefully, it, uh, you guys enjoy it. So, um, let's see, Kay, if you want to go and give a rundown of what we're going to be kind of going over. All right, we got uh, a little bit of everything, guys. We're, so what we're going to do, we're going to try to keep like the same format week by week um, when we do this, unless we bring in some some special guests, which we'll do. Um, but uh, we'll go just kind of go over you know, weekly NFL news, big stuff that's going on. Um, we've got uh, you know our, our head-to-head predictions. Uh, so we'll go ahead and throw in who we think's got the wins for each week, just head-to-head. I don't, I can't cover the spread. I can never figure that stuff out. I don't know about you, Rhino. Um, I'm nowhere near near uh, pulling that off. Um, <laughs> we want to do a. We'll, we'll also throw in like a weekly Madden recap of everything that goes on because a lot does happen in there. Um, we'll throw in some, some market tips, uh, and advice, what to expect for the following week. And, uh, I don't know, anything else that kind of, that comes up during the next hour, football related. Yeah, we'll kind of play by ear. We'll have a a set format and whatnot. And, you know, if something comes up, we want to kind of go on a tangent on and see what we, you know, see how we feel about a certain news that came out or any kind of hot fantasy tips, whatnot, anything crazy like that. We'll, uh kind of play by ear yeah 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 no we'll see it uh i don't know the nfl's never never uh slow on on news i mean hell i seem like i feel like it's a, a year-round event now right like it never slows down it's always some kind of disaster going on oh yeah there's always news so well with that said we'll go ahead and kick it off into our nfl news portion of the show um Aaron Donald getting a huge six-year, $135 million contract with $87 million guaranteed. And that lasted all of a day before the Raiders went ahead and traded Khalil Mack to the Bears. And then the Bears go ahead and give Mack a six-year, $141 million deal with $90 million guaranteed. Crazy amount of money being thrown around by these two teams. Um I know the Raiders Raiders fans are kind of upset with the whole Mac trade, although you get two first round picks out of that. I mean, that's a pretty solid return. Mac is a stud. He's you know being a Raider or a Broncos fan, I I hate the Raiders, but you know I got to give credit where credits due. Uh, Mac is a beast, so we'll see what he does there. Okay, what are your thoughts on that with the money, um, the trade? Man, it's tough. So I'm at I'm at like a weird spot with these. Um, like I know these guys are really good, right? Donald's really good. Max even better. Um, they can they can change around a defense. The I I'm even like I'm okay with the with the dollar amount of money, right? The dollar amount is fine. I don't care, you know what? These guys are are superstars. They're they're crazy athletes. They dedicate their lives to these uh, to these sports. Um, you know, I don't care if you know they make a hundred million dollars a year, whatever. The only thing, like, I see a big issue coming down the road, though, is 
there's only so much cap space. Oh, yeah. right? Like per team. <clears throat> How many of these guys are going to get to this elite level that you're going to outspend the salary cap on four guys? You know what I mean? Like even right now, I mean, you're talking guys that are taking 20% of a team's cap. I mean, we're going to be in some trouble soon because the NFL players, they want to get paid and rightfully so. Uh, we're going to run out of resources and then out of, I mean, if this continues and more and more guys um, feel that they're up to this caliber within the next four years, I think, I think we're going to head towards a lockout or the NFL is going to have to double the, the salary cap. Yeah, one I mean, one or the other. I mean, they're I mean gonna, we're going to be, yeah, no, go ahead. <laughs> I'm just saying in general, because I mean, you get a lot of the NFL players that are upset with what they're getting paid because they see these contracts that NBA players are making. But, right. you know, the NBA on a team, you have, what, 11 players? Where the NFL, you have 53 guys on a team. You know, you you, you can't sustain that. It's going to be astronomical, the amount of money that these guys or the teams are going to have to dish out. I know the owners make a lot of money and whatnot. I get that. But, well, yeah. I mean, what's that's going to affect us as the consumers, you know, when we want to go to a game or something like that, you know, how they're just going to start jacking up prices because they got to pay these players. Um, yeah, yeah, that's where it goes next. The amount of money that's being thrown around right now. I mean, these right. defensive players are getting quarterback money almost, or old quarterback money. You know, I mean, you got guys like Aaron Rodgers making a huge amount of money now, and now these defensive studs are wanting about the same amount. So, I mean, how right. many teams can pull off a contract like that? Like you said, you know, with the Raiders, they're going to have to pay Carr, or they already paid Carr, I think, and then trying to pay Mac is just too much. You're going to cripple the team. Right. And that's insanity that that two players, right, one on each side of the ball breaks your team. Like that's like that's where their issue lies right now is, you you know, it. I don't know. I, like, I know the NFL kind of, you know, the NFL um, likes parity. It wants wants teams to be able to be competitive year in, year out. Um, you know, and that's why they have the salary cap. But I, I think the players are are overgrowing the, the current salary cap. And I think it's more of a hindrance to the league. Um like guys like Khalil Mack should never leave Oakland. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Not like back in the day. I mean, you're talking, I mean, you know, these superstar players never, never change teams. You know what I mean? You're, um, yeah. Joe Montana wasn't traded six times because of salary cap issues. Um, you, you know, like these guys are supposed to live and die with their team. Um, and be like the face of that franchise for 30, 40, 50 years. And it doesn't happen anymore because now we're like, oh, uh, we're out of money. So you got to go. Sorry. Yep. yep. I mean, you get these cap casualties and whatnot. You see it every year with the cuts after preseason. You know, right. guys like, who was it, Dan Bailey with the, the Cowboys? He's a consistent kicker. He's like one of the best in the league. However, he, the Cowboys cut him because of cap space. You know, he was set to make yeah, for a $4 kicker. million this year. Four million dollars. They 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 went with a rookie who's making like four hundred k. So yeah, it uh, that's insanity. Um, I don't. Uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of that. I don't. I don't like that. I think the cap's gonna increase, and uh, I don't know. I think the NFL's just gotta move some stuff around. I mean, I don't. Know, it's a yeah. tough call. They get so much money from outside the game, right? Like going to the games every day isn't what what brings in the revenue for the NFL. All the jersey yeah. sales. Um, you know the TV deals that they're they make money hand over fist nonstop. Um, I think I think it's just being allocated in the wrong places. Yeah, and then uh, going back to what you said, you know, guys like Mac shouldn't leave. And then you know, uh, McKenzie, the Raiders GM, actually said it. I was uh, on quote. It was in the final hour that it kind of just hit hard and heavy. It was not a plan to trade him at all. So I don't know. It looks like uh, there's some kind of pushback you know between right. Gruden and McKenzie I don't think um it seemed like Gruden had it out for Mac from what of what I've been reading yeah, I don't get uh, that that doesn't make sense to to him before he even had the job you know and right it, it's just interesting I know a lot of the Raiders fans are kind of pissed off at Gruden already and you know he hasn't even coached his first official game with back with the Raiders um so it'll be interesting yeah. to see like it's gonna be you know we'll have to wait and see how it plays out because they get two first round picks back so Right. Uh, see what Gruden and McKenzie can turn those into. So, yeah, they have to hit on those, way. though. You they know what I mean? Like, yeah. not every first round pick is a slam dunk. I mean, it. Um... Yeah, lots of us. Look at Paxton Lynch. <laughs> yeah, trust me, I'm a Bills fan, man. It, uh, year after year after year. Yeah. Um, but 
Yeah, no, I don't know. It uh, They have to hit on him or else it's going to be a giant waste and there's going to be a riot um, in Oakland. All right. <laughs> well, Vegas. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Vegas now. Jeez. Yep. Everybody's got to stop moving. I can't keep track where everybody's at. <laughs> Who else has moved? <laughs> Which is, I don't uh, like, well, LA, the Chargers moved oh, last yeah, year. It took me 17 LA. weeks to get that right. Oh, and then I'm sure the once. The announcers were still calling them San Diego. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, and then as soon as the season starts again, I'm going to go back to calling them San Diego. Like, right. there's no one there. <laughs> Poor San Diego. I know. Oh, the Padres. Rad. Yeah. Uh, okay, moving on. So okay. lately, Ramsey's been in the news a lot with all of his trash talk. You know, it feels yeah. like he's got an opinion on every player in the league you know he's been he's been dogging on gronk um who was the one guy that he actually complimented on there's who was it actually i gotta find it i don't remember i only pay attention to all the trash talk because it's more fun because it's more fun um nobody cares who it uh i don't know the only people and this is funny and i'm gonna say this mostly because i've talked um a lot to a patriots fan yeah. Um, but the only one that cried about it were the Patriots fans when he made fun of Gronk. Um, like this guy's made fun of every single team over the last two years, right? Every, a player on every single team. That's what he does. That's what his MO. Um, but uh, I, who cares? Like, that's just what he does. Um, but yeah, like I said, it seemed like Patriots fans got really upset when he talked about Gronk. Obviously, Gronk isn't terrible. Um, you know, Ramsey's throwing all this shade at him. But I think at the end of the day, I think what it, the only disservice that all the trash talk does um, is to Ramsey himself, right? Like everybody already knows that he's this good. He's known yeah. as one of the top corners in the league. Um, I think it, I don't know, man, it, it seems more like a little kid crying for help, not for help, but for attention. You know, <laughs> he, does, he doesn't need help. He just like, I don't know, especially now, like, I don't, it's weird, like, preseason's over with, you know, or was coming to an end, um, I don't know, maybe because in the preseason, a lot of the, the news focuses on all the rookies throughout the year, and yep. he was just like, hey, no, I'm still here, everyone come look at me, stop looking at that guy, come look at me, um, and I mean, obviously, it's getting egged on, too, by his, like, the reporters in the room, right, like, the local guys that see him day in, day out. Yeah. Um, like I can guarantee you there's some reporter there where Ramsey would just be sitting there after practice or whatever. And the reporter is going to walk up and go, Hey, uh, who sucks today? And he's <laughs> like, Oh, uh, let me pick a guy. And that's, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, this isn't some, <clears throat> some long drawn out. He's got, uh, you know, giant, uh, I don't know. He doesn't lose sleep over these guys. He goes, uh, yeah, let's write this one. This will be fun. This will make the news. Um, yeah, exactly. That's all I think I, I, you know, I, I do like the trash talk, you know, uh, cause it, now that he's been talking the talk, he's got to walk the walk this year. Right. Uh, he's really got to prove himself that he is elite. Um, so we'll see what happens over the year. I mean, that Jags defense is scary good. You know, he's a big yeah. piece of that, that defense. And uh, I think with the with all the trash talking, yeah, he's definitely got to back it up this season. Right. Yeah, no, I like it. I mean, um, I think it adds, you know, that little bit of extra something on – uh, I don't know, like that Thursday night game. I don't, you know, I don't even know if they have one this year, but just, I mean, how many times over the years has there been like a, a Thursday or a Monday night game and you go, are you serious? This is the game that's on. Like it's the Bills <laughs> and the Browns. I'm like, who Ugh. planned this? Like, what an idiot. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm like, I don't want to watch this. No. Um, but something like this gives you a reason to watch. You know what I mean? Like Odell and Josh Norman line up together and I'm like, hey, okay, I, I'm going to watch this one. I'm going to sit and actually, I don't care about the game. I'm watching these two to see who throw up, who punches first. Oh yeah. Well, was um, it last year that AJ green, like choke, <laughs> but choke slam Ramsey, Ramsey. Yeah. <laughs> threw him down, you know? Right. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, it's stuff like this. Of, uh, Cortland Finnegan. Remember, uh, not, is it Cortland Finnegan? The old cornerback for the Rams and Titans who always got into people's heads, man. That was really? just like his game. He just always antagonized his receivers. And See, that's great. It's great to an extent, right? Especially like for me, like I'm a big hockey guy, right? So yeah. um, I, not so much anymore. I mean, there's a couple guys still around these, you know, these rats. Like I remember an old Sabres player, Matthew Barnaby. They called him Matt the Rat because not the greatest hockey player, 
um, but literally just went out and did not stop talking for three hours uh, <laughs> to every guy on the other team's bench. You know what I mean? And just, yeah, he was Matt the rat. Like they used to bring rubber rats to the rink and throw them on the ice when he would get in a fight. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> um, awesome. It was fantastic. Um, but I think, and it, it makes, it made hockey better. You know what I mean? It was just, it, it was a guy you love to hate and every yeah. team had at least one. Um, and it, I don't know. Maybe I think the NFL might be better if we had more trash talkers on each team. Like everybody yeah. focuses so much on saying the right thing all the time. You know, especially you look at these these rookies. Like I've I've seen a lot of Josh Allen this year, and uh, every time you know a reporter asks him a question, everything's the greatest. He's just happy to be here. Big smile on his oh, face. Yeah. No, well, the coaches are doing coach great. Coach. Everybody, yeah, all yeah. that stuff. I'm like, you know, I mean, you don't want him to 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 blow up his own team, but yeah. Um, it wasn't like Rodgers Rams calling all of his receivers. <laughs> Sorry ass receivers. Yeah, right? Like that's no good, <laughs> right? That's that's a bad move. Um yeah. but even like Ramsey Ramsey called um Josh Allen trash. Josh Allen's response. Yeah. He knows who I am. Like he was <laughs> <laughs> That was his response. <laughs> uh, that's great, man. It's it's awesome. Right, exactly. Like but... that's funny too. Like that's kind of like a, you know, uh, like banter back at him, you know what I mean? Like I'm okay with no guys just be creative with it i mean for christ's sake you're playing football for a living go fucking mess Have around fun, like that's yeah i mean go go screw off like it's it's a game you're playing a game for a living go enjoy it I like to leave in michael crabtree's uh chain <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> twice man just getting right. the, getting to the heads yep so all right moving on so uh jerk mckinnon officially acl tear uh, yeah big i think it's a big blow to the niners um you got Jimmy Garoppolo coming back, you know, his, his second year with the uh, the Niners, finished out the year 5-0. and um, You know, there's a lot of expectations with San Fran this year. I still don't think they're going to win the division. We'll get to that later. But um, this, this ACL tear with Jarek McKinnon, I think, is pretty big blow. You know, he's going to be the bell cow back for them. And um, I think that, that really hurts their chances this year. What do you think? Uh, yeah, no, I think this is this is brutal. I mean, you're looking at – um, I had high hopes for for San Francisco. Like I'm, you know, I'm, um, being a, a Bills fan. Um, not a, you know, not really warm tinglys for for any former Patriot, but uh, but I still want Jimmy G to be to do well out there. I think he looked good at the end of last year. Um, a lot of guys were hyped up about him. Uh, him yeah. coming, you know, coming back and running. You know, some guys are like, oh, it's sixteen and oh, it's not happening. Um, even before they lost McKinnon, that, that wasn't a possibility. Um, the team's going to be decent, but it's not, I don't think it's anywhere near this like superstar caliber, but, uh, this is a huge, their bench wasn't good enough to sustain, um, a giant loss. Not that I ever thought McKinnon was like some elite player, right? Like I've, yeah. I've had him before in fantasy. He's had really good weeks. He's had really, really bad weeks. Um, but I mean, now we're looking at Matt Breda, Alfred Morris, and some other guy who I've never even seen his name before, as this yep. new like committee of running backs in San Francisco. Um, anytime you go, I don't. I'm not a fan of running back committees. I know some coaches in the NFL swear by them. Uh, yeah. They're all for them. I'm not a huge fan. Um, I think those bell cow guys they tend to get into a rhythm, and then they can really start to dominate games. Um, I felt like Adrian Peterson never got into a groove last year because he would play like one run per series when he was yep. with new Orleans. And he just like never got into a, um, never got into a groove, could never get things moving. So he, you know, had a, another down year. Um, these guys, I mean, Alfred Morris has been great in the past. Um, Matthew Breda has not been terrible in the past. Nope. Um, but at the same time, if these guys are splitting carries, I mean, if it's, you know, 50% for one guy, 30 for, you know, another guy, 20 for another guy. Um, I don't know if they really get, uh, get moving. Um, I don't know. Or they could rally behind it and all go nuts. And you know yeah. what I mean? So it's a tough call, but fantasy wise, uh, sucks. I know some people probably took McKinnon. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you were lucky and at least got him uh. like that's still a waste of a third, fourth round pick. You know, he shouldn't have gone before that. But, uh, you know, third, yeah. fourth round guy, uh, that's going to sting to go down before he even plays a snap. 
got some yeah, I think it's what the recovery first big to do. blow to some of the fantasy teams this season. You know, last year was the David Johnson. So Ugh, many people. Don't. First I know, I was draft, one of like them. First overall pick, man, and not even one completing of a full game. David Johnson goes down last year and just cripples people's teams. I know. Uh, I was in a keeper league. I was in a keeper league. He was my keeper, and then just a waste. Yeah, and those are the worst because there's like the first round in a keeper league is really like the third round. So yeah, it was ugly. That's, <laughs> so I mean that's a problem. But like you said, uh, I mean fantasy wise, Breda and Morris probably should be picked up if you guys have him or don't even have him, and uh, kind of hope for the best. Stash him on the bench for now and see what plays out in San Francisco. So yeah, I would pick up at least one of them. You know what I mean? Drop your second tight end. Some of you guys I know have two defenses and two t- two kickers right now. Um, Why? <laughs> go ahead. I know. Don't ever do that. Don't uh, ever. drop those guys. At, you know, if Breda and Morris are still out there, go pick them up, pick up at least one of them and then roll the dice. One of them could end up being the bell cow every down, every down uh, runner. So I mean, if you can steal that guy from a waiver wire pick now, it's the time to do it. This is what you want to look for all season in fantasy. Yep. So, all right, moving on. Uh, Martavis Bryant being cut by the Raiders thoughts um this one's uh a little tough i mean we know bryant has been decent in the past he's not a bad player by any means um i think this is one of those instances where there's a player that teams don't want um for the quote distraction um reasons in the locker room um uh, I mean, more and more, I think a lot of teams are going towards um, I don't, like a cohesive unit yeah. um, in their locker rooms, especially after what happened, uh, was it two years ago? Um, where, or was it last year? No, it was two years ago, like when all the kneeling stuff started. Oh, and yeah. I feel like a lot, of, a, a lot of locker rooms, they had to talk about issues that they've never talked about before. Um, you know, players, individual players, one-on-one had to talk about things that they've never had to go over before. Um, and you know, I, I'm not in every locker room, but I know a lot about what goes on inside the bills organization. Um, a lot of those guys have said that those conversations really brought those guys together. It gave them a better understanding of each other. Um, and they, you know, they, they molded, they, they became, they actually became a team. Um, and uh, I think, you know, you bring in a guy, if Martavis Bryant doesn't fit into the mold of that team, um, I, I think teams are, are much quicker to dismiss those distractions now. I think John Gruden, I mean, that guy is playing. It's funny how different he is when he's a coach and when he's in the booth. You know, when right, he's in right. the booth, you know, he's this lovable, fun guy, goofy, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. very char- charismatic and whatnot. And, you know, when he's now you hear the things that he's doing in Oakland, you know, moving Khalil Mack, cutting Bryant, stuff yeah. like that, making these decisions. You know, he's 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 not there to make any friends. He's there to win, you know. Yeah, um, but it, I think this uh, is going to be the la- end of the road for Bryant. You know, uh, he's still got a suspension pending. And if he's not on a team, that suspension doesn't start until he signs. So who's going to take right. the risk on him? I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. Uh, somebody might, though. I mean, you never know. If we get another wide receiver injury um, early here, yeah, somebody. Well, no, not even. I don't. No, I take that back. If some there's a wide receiver injury, I don't think somebody grabs him up because that suspension's still there and that's brutal. Yep, you still got Des Bryant out there. You got a couple pretty good wide receivers that got cut over the weekend. You know, um, yeah. There's there's lots of options out there. I don't think a team's going to be taking the risk on him because I don't think right. his talent is enough to deal with the headache. Yeah. He's good, but he's not that good. Oh, uh, going back, by the way, somebody in chat told me that um, Amir Abdullah. Oh, I don't know if he knows this for sure. Straight. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, but somebody was show, suggesting uh, Abdullah, Amir Abdullah, will be traded to the Niners. Yeah. I, don't, I, I haven't heard any news about that. Um, he's still with Detroit, right, Abdullah? I believe so. He's kind of fallen yeah. off the radar, too. He has. And they still got what? They got Blunt there. They got. Um, there's yeah, they built up around him. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, like you said, I think the two running backs that they want to go forward are already on that roster. Right. With Braden and uh, Morris. So, um, all right. So, Teddy Bridgewater traded to the Saints. Uh, Jets picked him up in the offseason, worked him out and whatnot. Uh, he's still working his way back from that 
nasty non-contact ACL Ooh, yeah. explosion almost. The yeah. doctors were not pretty confident that he was going to be able to play again. Um, I was a big fan of Teddy Bridgewater, you know, when he was with Minnesota. Uh, I think that that kid was going to have a great career, you know, and then this this horrible injury set him back. Uh, so it's interested to I'm interested to see what happens with him in New Orleans. You know, you got Drew Brees right. who's aging. You know, he's got maybe one or two years left. He's on the verge of breaking a shit ton of passing records. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Bridgewater is going to be a good guy to kind of just wait in the wings and uh, take over for Brees when he's done. Because I still think Bridgewater is going to be a good quarterback. I think he's got the talent there. Um, I think it's going to be good for him to kind of sit and let that knee that knee fully heal, and uh, he can build back the strength in that knee. To, Right. Carry on his career, so. Yeah, no, I'm I'm 100% with you on this one. I thought Bridgewater um was in line to be the you know, another superstar quarterback. Yeah. Um before the injury, um and f- early in the season when the Bills were, you know, everybody was making their trades for quarterbacks. I was really hoping that the Bills would make a play on Teddy Bridgewater, um but instead yeah. they went AJ McCarron. <laughs> <laughs> Rip. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> uh. Um <clears throat> But uh, yeah, no, I think you're right. I think um, the Saints might be a, a good place for him. Um, I don't know how much longer Breeze you know, has left or how much he wants to play. I mean, I'm a huge Breeze fan. I always have been. Um, so, you know, I'd like him to play another four or five, six years. But I mean, he's got a family. He might he might just want to call it quits soon. Yeah, while well, he's um, still got his health. Yeah, I mean, I, don't, I mean, Last year, the Saints didn't throw the ball a whole much. They ran over teams. Very, very yeah. different. So it almost makes you wonder maybe if, like, has he lost a step? Like, is he, I don't know. Like, maybe their their game plan was, hey, um, I can't do this anymore. I can't throw 5,000 yards this season. Um, like, okay, well, let's let's try a different game plan. And, I mean, it worked for them. They did well. Yeah. Um, I mean, you go, you I go don't back know. with the, uh, I mean, the, the Saints and Breeze have always been, you know, they always sling the ball around. You know, Breeze is always there right. on the verge of 5,000 passing yards every season. Yeah. But that didn't really work for them. They got one Super Bowl out of it, which is, you know, almost a decade ago now. Um, so I think with Sean Payton just kind of doing the change of pace, you know, wait, slinging the ball all around the place isn't working. But now they got Alvin Kamara. They got yeah. Ingram, who's on suspension right now. But both of those guys were, were studs last year for them in the run game. So it was kind of nice to take the load off of Breeze's shoulder. But. Um, yeah, I didn't. I didn't know yeah, this. Like, I actually had to yeah. look up. I had to look up the stats. But both of those running backs, Kamara and Ingram, both went over fourteen hundred yards and twelve touchdowns. It's insane. <laughs> they both had fourteen hundred yards and twelve touchdowns. That is absolutely unreal to have that split between two yeah. guys. Um, yeah. Maybe I mean this. I you know. I mean that's one of the spots where running back by, by committee worked, and uh, you know each guy became a low end running back one you know, running, you know, high running back two kind of situation. Yep. Um, a lot of weeks, Kamara was a straight starter because he just turned into a, a freak some weeks, but then disappeared other weeks. <laughs> yeah. um, so he's going to be an interesting one to see how he goes the first four weeks with Ingram on suspension. And then to see how that comes, uh, how they change that up when, when Ingram does come back. Um, I don't know if he's going to be... I don't know. It's Kamara's place. If he can really command that backfield now and take over some games, yeah. um, Ingram could be left on the outside looking in. I think. I don't know. I mean, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Yeah. Um, you touched base on this earlier, but you said AJ McCarron. Uh, your Bills traded for him or signed him? I don't remember what you guys they... did. But... Yeah, I don't remember what they did. I think they just signed him. They signed him. Yeah, they signed him. Then they traded for him. him. To the yeah. Raiders, so they're going all in on Josh Allen. It seems. I know you're a diehard Bills fan. What are your thoughts on that? Um, so I did not like. I'm one of the guys. I did not like the the Josh Allen pick. Right? <laughs> Was not a a fan. Yeah. Um, but then when I finally got to see him start throwing the ball at training camp, like he has this like instant kind of wow factor. Like he throws the ball with, like. I have not seen someone throw a ball like that in like two decades. Chicks take um, the long ball. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> it, uh, he's super impressive what he can do. And he, I think, I feel like his, from what I've seen anyway, his accuracy, um, you know, a lot of these quote experts were really down on his accuracy uh, during yep. the draft. And uh, I mean, I, he doesn't throw every ball perfect, 
but he's also the only quarterback I've seen that can throw 75 yards in the air and still connect. Yeah. Um, so, and, and, and his accuracy is not bad. Like I'm not, he's not throwing it at, at hot dog vendors at training camp or at practice. Like the guys, <laughs> yeah. the ball's there. You know what I mean? Um, so no, I think he's, I think he's going to be great in the long run. Um, some of the plays that he made, even like, I know, you know, preseason, whatever, but even, uh, some of the plays that I've seen him make the reads and the, the ability to stay in a pocket, um, and sidestep a defender blitzing at him and then throw an absolute laser beam to a guy in double coverage, um, are, are unreal. He's, yep. he's going to be fun to watch because he's not afraid to, th- cause he doesn't believe he can't fit a ball in anywhere, right? He's convinced. Like Brett Favre. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. And th- those guys are fun to watch, right? So yeah. like he'll see a guy like, well, if I throw this fast enough, they won't be able to react to it. And that's his mindset. He's just, he wants to beat the corners. Um, sometimes it's going to work and it's going to look crazy highlight, real touchdowns. Yep. Other times he's going to look like a big idiot rookie who throws in a double <laughs> coverage and gets picked off. Yep. Um, that's going to happen. But with that saying, I don't even know if he's the starter yet. I don't know. I really think they're going to go with Peterman. Dude, I'm telling this coaching staff has something for Peterman. And to be honest, Peterman, <laughs> I, I'm going to. All right. So everybody remembers the five pick game, right? That's it, all it, I that's every time I think all, of Peterman, I think it's all anybody pick, yeah. ever remembers. What you don't know is that he has an 80 percent completion rating through this entire preseason. Playing only when he's playing with the ones, playing not through every pass. Oh, nope. Okay. When only when he's playing when he's playing with the starters, he has an 80 percent completion rating. Um. He's been phenomenal. He's made great throws. Um, I know boggles my mind too. He's had one yeah. pick, but and it literally went off of his uh, receiver's shoulder and then bounced in the air. So I can't yeah, we'll put see. that. Yeah, it. Uh, I trust. I'm not real high on him. I don't. I think he can play okay, but I think. Um, I think it's got to be Josh Allen. I think that what they're afraid of, of the offensive line is so bad that uh, if we put in a rookie, he's just going to get destroyed yeah, no, you're heartbroken uh, you know, and, over losing tyrod taylor so <laughs> oh yeah yeah i'm devastated I'm, I'm absolutely devastated but uh yeah no i think they want to try to avoid their seventh overall pick um you know losing his acl uh for getting uh destroyed yeah we'll see how it plays out i mean a lot of people have the bills projected to be the worst team in the league this year so oh me too they're so gonna be I. in for a rough year man <laughs> So do, so do I. So do I. I'm calling like two and twelve this year, um, and based not even based on quarterback play. Um, I mean, we made the playoffs with Tyrod Taylor. You guys, everybody in Cleveland is going to be uh, in for a shock when they find out how terrible uh, he is. We made the playoffs. He'll make some. <laughs> oh, no, they still had to win. <laughs> um, forget. Uh, yeah, I, I think Tyrod is another uh, a different. I feel bad for the guys in Cleveland. Everybody else in the NFL is so like hyped. It gets hyped up on this guy. Um, he's not bad, right? Everybody sees his highlight reel touchdown passes where he shakes off four blitzers, you know, spins out of the pocket, <laughs> rolls around, then throws a, a 50-yard touchdown bomb. That's great. That happens once every other game. Um, the rest of the time, it's, you know, third and four with 20 seconds to go, and he takes a sack instead of throwing it away. You know, trying to scramble around, he wastes eight seconds, eight of those 12 seconds, and gets <laughs> sacked, you know, and ends the game that way instead of, why don't you just throw the ball away and we have another shot at the end zone? But he makes those kind of decisions that are incredibly frustrating. So good luck, Cleveland. Um, you're just not making the playoffs this year. I'm sorry. Oof. Oof. Hot take. All right. Yeah, hot <laughs> Moving takes. on, guys. Hot takes. All right. Uh, next, next segment here. Uh, Kay and I are going to go over our predictions. Uh, we'll go division by division. And uh, we'll give our picks on what each division is probably going to do this season. Um, it would be kind of fun to look back at this uh, at the end of the season, kind of watch this video again and just kind of see where we went wrong, where we were right. Yeah. Um, so we'll see how it goes. We're going to start with the AFC East. Um, I mean, it's kind of straightforward. Everybody already knows. Patriots are probably going to run away with that division again. Uh, yeah. There's... Brady's getting older, but. Yeah. Yeah, there's no surprises there. Um, the yeah. Patriots are still the Patriots. There's a lot. I think that's coming to an end soon, though. I don't think this is going to be a thing for. I mean, this might be the last year, to be honest. Um, True. These guys are a little 
there's so much like turmoil inside that locker room. Um, trading away guys like Malcolm Butler. I mean, your Super Bowl, you know, saviors uh, yep. a few years ago to just not even allowing him to play. It's mind boggling what's going on there. Um, people are turning on each other left and right. Yep. Um, but just by pure talent on the roster, New England is going to, and the way those guys play together is so much different than every other team in the NFL. Trust me, I'm not a Patriots fan. I just have eyeballs, and I see it year after year. Yeah. Got to recognize uh, yeah. it, you know. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're oh. still stuck there. I mean, the Bills rookie quarterback or Nate Peterman, uh, the Jets rookie <laughs> quarterback or who else do they have? I don't even remember. Uh, Josh McCown. Josh McC- Yeah, so Josh McCown, same exact position as the Bills, right? Rookie quarterback or blah. Um, but the, the Dol- Dolphins, I mean, the Dolphins, yes. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not, I don't completely hate um, their quarterback that now has left my brain. Tannehill? Yes, Tannehill. Dude, he hasn't played a game in like 21 months. I know, I know, but I, I don't hate him. He's better, th- he's always does better than I expect. Uh, um, I don't know. I'm never, I've never been high on Tannehill. I think he's overrated. I, I don't want to say I'm high on him. I'm just saying he does better than I expect him to. Um, I, I'm still not good enough to win the division, though. That's not happening. No. Um, so, yeah, AF, AFC East, um, you know, New England's going to take it. I, you know, I don't think they're going to run away with it. I think maybe 11 wins this year. 11-5. Um, yeah, 11-5 seems pretty, uh, I don't know, almost pedestrian for them, though. Who was it? I mean, they have, I mean, what other options? You got Tannehill in Miami. You got um, Osweiler, who's, oh, my God, don't even get me started. Yeah, Tannehill, right. Osweiler. And they have another guy. What the hell's his name? Who does? Three key. I know the Dolphins are keeping three. Uh, the David Fowles. Oh, yeah. Never even heard of the dude, but. Yeah. Uh, Dolphins are keeping three of them because they're still kind of a toss-up on, or questionable on Tannehill if he's even going to be able to play. So Right. Has he played any? I haven't even actually watched any Miami preseason. I have watched. Played? I haven't seen any. I've gone through, you know, just like some clips from each week, but I don't remember seeing any from Tannehill. Yeah, see, that's. I don't I'm know. sure he's so we'll played though. He had to have played. Uh, I'll have to go back and look at stats. Yeah. Um. But yeah, Darnold getting a start with the Jets, the youngest starting QB, which is insane. 21 years old, 69 days. That's unreal. The guy just turned. 21, man. He's <laughs> just old enough to go to the bar and have a nice adult right, right. beverage. And he's going to be leading the New York Jets on Sundays. It's, it's crazy. When I was 21, I was just waking up hungover all the time. So. Yeah, he uh, might be too. <laughs> yeah, you never know. Uh, all right, so moving on to the AFC and North. Um, you got the Browns. A lot of people are uh, high on the Browns this year. We already touched base on it. You know, they made some pretty big moves in the offseason. Um, they got Landry at wide receiver. Josh Gordon's coming back. They got Tyrod Taylor. They picked Baker Mayfield. You still got all that talent on defense. Um, but I feel like the AFC North is always a slugfest. Um, yeah, I still don't think that they have the means to, um, on a consistent basis, beat the Bengals, let alone the Steelers. Um, I think the Steelers are still going to win that division. Yeah, I think I think hands down, I think the Steelers still win. They still have, you know, arguably the best running back in the league, arguably the best wide receiver in the league, um, and an aging. <laughs> yeah, um, arguably. <laughs> but uh, I, and then I mean, Big Ben. I mean, I know they're getting older. They have not had the you know greatest years. Um. There's still a force to be reckoned with. Their defense is oh, not yeah. terrible. I mean, obviously they take a huge loss with with Shazier. Um but uh I, I don't know. I think the Steelers are too strong in that division. Um I don't expect Tyrod Taylor or Baker Mayfield <laughs> to come in. Um and same with you know Jarvis Landry. Jarvis Landry's a nice player. He's a nice player. Um I don't think he's out you know, I'm going to outshine Antonio Brown in that head to head game. You know, I still think Antonio Brown wins that matchup. All I got to say is I'm definitely intrigued to watch the Browns this year. It's been a while since I think anybody has said that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no. And I think that's why I think that's why people are saying because they're like, oh, uh, they don't expect them to be the worst team in the league. And that like perks their ears up. They're like, wait, something different. Um, so 
I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, moving on to the AFC South. Um, that's going to be a tough division, I think, as well. You got the Jaguars returning with that stout defense. They still have Bortles right. at quarterback, though. But yeah. they got Fournette running the game, uh, running the ball. You got Texans coming back with Deshaun Watson. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how he rebounds after his ACL and his right. sophomore year. Um, and then you got the Colts with getting Andrew Luck back. I think Andrew Luck, ugh, that's. I think he's hurt again. I, yeah, he's so fragile, man. That that O, that o line again. was so bad for so long. They just ignored it, and it cost him. I think it ruined his career. Yeah. Um. So it's a very unfortunate. But if he could stay healthy, I think the Colts got a shot. And then the Titans, you know, uh, Mariota's coming back. They made some moves. Uh, they got Malcolm Butler. So I think the AFC right. South is, you know, is a definitely an intriguing division. However, I think it's going to come down to the Texans and Jaguars. Um. I think the Texans are the better overall, like all around team. Right. And the Jaguars are just so good on defense. Right. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how those two teams shake out. Yeah. Um, I agree. I 100% I agree with you. We are on the same page on this one. Um, the Colts, I mean, the Colts could surprise and do really well. You know, I mean, they could gel and, uh, and come together. I mean, Jacoby Brissett is still their backup, I believe. Um, he's not awful. No, um, you know, he can with another year under his belt, even if um, if luck isn't up to the task or, or, or is hurt again, he could come in and play a lot better than he has. Um, Tennessee, like you said, with Mariota, um, always kind of a surprise team. I don't know what to ever take from them. Yeah. I'm not surprised at six and ten. I'm not surprised at twelve and four. Yep. Um, <laughs> either. You know what I mean? Either one. I, I don't know which way they go. I think they they end up with a lot of like games won and lost in the last four minutes of a game um but uh i'm excited to watch houston this year me too i'm excited to watch because they i mean we only had such a small sample size with deshaun watson last year and like instantly he turned me into a texans fan like overnight like i'm watching <laughs> and i'm like oh my god this guy is unreal yeah. to watch um and so uh, it was it's just it was a lot of fun but jacksonville's defense I, I don't know if they can repeat, you know, like it's so hard to tell if a, if a defense can can stay at that level for multiple years. Like that's always been a tough thing in the NFL for guys to do. Yep. Um, if they can, though, if they can, they can beat anybody. Absolutely. If you can completely neutralize uh, an offense. I, but the Texans are going to be their toughest, their toughest route. I mean, they're loaded at wide receiver. Yep. Um, they have. Uh, a decent running back in Lamar Miller. Um, I, li I like Lamar. I like Lamar Miller when Deshaun Watson's playing. It's yeah. kind of like you know they 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 complement each other well. Yeah. yeah. Um, Deshaun Watson goes out. Miller's useless. Useless because um, who do they got? Whedon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just okay, guys, stack the box. We win. Um, so uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. That's going to be a fun. The AFC South is going to be fun to watch. But uh, all right, so your definitive pick though, you got to pick one. Uh, I'm gonna go with the I'm gonna go with the Jaguars again for back to back seasons. All right, I'm gonna go I'm gonna, gonna go Texans. I'm gonna say Watson stays healthy all year and puts up MVP numbers. Hmm. Okay, I like it. All right, moving yeah. on. AFC West, the home of my beloved Broncos. Yes, yeah, is your home uh, home turf. I think the AFC West again is one of the toughest divisions in the the league. Um, you got Gruden taking over the Raiders this year. You got Derek Carr. I mean, Max gone out of that defense, though, so it'll be interesting. I think they already struggled on defense a little bit in Oakland, so I think that's a huge hit to them. Uh, but offensively, they got a pretty good team. Um, the Broncos, you know, I'm going to be biased about this. I'm very excited to see what Case Keenum can do this year. He's a huge, huge upgrade over Trevor Simeon mm -hmm. and uh, Paxton Lynch for – God knows why Elway decided to keep Lynch instead of just cutting bait, but whatever. <laughs> um, and then the Denver defense, you know, they lost a uh, keep to leave, but they got Chubb and Miller. Oh my God. I'm excited to watch those two go at it. And oh just yeah. Attack the oh quarterback. yeah. You know, Von Miller was getting double teamed all last season because they didn't have that, that other guy, you know, after where retired. So I'm really excited to see what happens there. Um, their <clears throat> cornerback situation is a little worrisome. They went out and signed Pac-Man Jones, who I don't agree with the pick. You know, I like him as a player, but as a person, I think he's a piece of shit. But yeah, um, like everybody agrees. Very questionable signing. Um, and then the Chiefs, you know, they lost Alex Smith. They got they got Mahomes. 
You know, a lot of people are high on Mahomes. He's like Josh Allen. He has that cannon of an arm. Right. Um, a lot of people I know you're excited to, you know, you've been taking Hill and a lot of your fantasy drafts, which we'll get into later. Um, going with for that deep route, you know, the risk it and biscuit, kind of what Arians was doing mm-hmm. with Arizona last year. So I'm excited to see how that works. Not really, because I hate the Chiefs, but you know, <laughs> as a fan in general, it's gonna be exciting to see. Um, and then the Chargers, you know, they're always kind of just there. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, was so last close. year I think they got a cut, like what was it? three or four straight games they lost by like three points or less or something yeah. like that. And then, um, you know, if that wasn't the case, they would have easily won the division last year. So, you know, you got Phillip Rivers coming back. They still have a ton of talent on offense and defense. I think that's the team that's probably going to win the division this year. Unfortunately, it pains me to say that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm hoping the Broncos can pull some magic this year with uh, improved offense. So, but I think it's the, the Chargers that are going to take away that division uh yeah no this one uh this one's a tough call it's a tough tough read on this one um i'm with you i cannot wait um to see broncos defense um you know what they just in the pass rush game right like i want to see quarterbacks back there and just like i I can just imagine like deer in the headlights scenarios when they see miller and chubb coming at them like how (laughs) like oh my god you know what i mean uh that's gonna be fun to watch um, I don't know if that's going to be enough to win the division, though. I don't, you know, t- I mean, they've won before on defense. Yeah. Um, Super Bowl 50. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but I don't, I don't know if they can, if they can pull it off. Um, I'm high on the Chiefs. Not. I'm, t- I'm high on some of the Chiefs. You know, I'm high on the Chiefs because their running game is always so good. Right. I-, I feel like for the last three years, the Chiefs have had a different running back. Uh, and they, they've all been like top 10 players, right? They had yeah. Spencer Ware got hurt two years ago and in walks Charkandrick West and Tears blows everybody out of the water. <laughs> and now he's nowhere, right? I don't think he signed with a team. Like oh, he's he, been cut. He, uh, signed by the Jets. Oh, did he get signed by the Jets? Yeah. Okay. Um, but, you know, out of nowhere, this kid comes off the, you know, like the fantasy waiver wire into a top 10 running back spot. Um, <laughs> last year, same thing. I think with Spencer Ware went down, in walks Kareem Hunt. And instant superstar. It's insane. The guy, I, had, I, oh my God, what a, Andy that Reed kid has. came in. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what he does. I remember um, last year, Hunt came in and they had just put a stat up on the screen, right? On his first play. Um, and, you know, what a 600 something touches, touches in college, not one fumble. Fumbles the ball first play of his career. <laughs> <laughs> Comes uh, back out the next drive and rushes for 45 yards and a touchdown. It's so like, okay, yeah. that's out of his system. I think he fumbled one more time the rest of the season. Um, but, uh, but, uh, but again, I don't think they're going to have the team that's going to be able to beat the chargers. The chargers are so good on, on offense and defense. Um, yeah. and to, like you said before, uh, to lose as many games as they did by not even a touchdown or less, but by a field goal or less, especially missing field goals. Like they found creative ways to lose games last year. It was very, I would turn on Chargers games in the last 30 seconds just to see how they would blow it last year. Yep. Um, they could be up by 21 <laughs> with 45 seconds to go and somehow lose the game. One of my um, favorite things is watching Rivers just have his temper. <laughs> it just makes yeah, he would lose his mind. God, that guy just throws. <laughs> I know. I love it. I love it. Uh, yeah, we go to the coach. We got to get rid of this guy. He's got to go. We got to we got to <laughs> get it. We got to get rid of this guy. Uh, um, so who's your pick yeah. for the division? I, I, I'm, go, I'm same with you. I think the Chargers, um, you know, exercise some demons and, and overcome those two point losses six times in a row. Um, <laughs> they're just, they're too stacked. They're def- I, I'm yeah, a big I fan agree. of their yeah, defense. Both, uh, Ingram, uh, it's... Yeah. Okay. Uh, moving on. NFC East. Uh, you got your Super Bowl champions in that division in the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, I think they're going to repeat as division champs. Uh, you got Carson Wentz coming back from his ACL injury. He's going to miss week one, but he's going to come back week two. Nick Foles has looked atrocious in the preseason, so they're going to be yeah. back ASAP. Um, a lot of people are still high on the Cowboys. I disagree. I think they're overrated. Um, I think you saw more of what – I mean, they have all those issues on the O-line now. They don't have that strength like they used to. Uh, right. The unfortunate news about Travis uh, Frederick – uh, Frederick, um, yeah. he's not going to be able to play. Um, they've lost a lot of the key members on that offensive line. It'll be interesting to see what Elliott can do with it. He's still a stud running back. 
However, I think defenses are going to be stacking that box and making Dak beat them because, I mean, who do they have on wide receiver? They don't have Des Bryant anymore. Um, I don't think they really have any standout guys. Um, um, I don't re- – oh, man. Who did they just pick up? They just picked up somebody. Was it? At, did they pick up Alan Hearns? Is that where he went? Alan Hearns, yeah. I drafted him yes. in, uh, almost two years Yeah, yeah. Um, but, like, I, I mean, it's – I think – Dallas has lost a lot of good pieces. I don't think they're going to be that good. Uh, sorry, Cowboys fans. I know you guys are very prideful. <laughs> um, right. You got the Redskins picking up Alex Smith, at quarterback. They lost Kirk Cousins. It'll be very interesting to see how they adjust to that. Um, Alex Smith likes to be captain check down, five-yard passes mm-hmm. constantly and whatnot. He doesn't like to throw deep. Um, they've signed mm-hmm. Adrian Peterson. They lost uh, Juice um, Geis. I don't remember. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Yeah, the um, rookie to ACL injury, which was a big blow to them. So they got Thompson and Peterson running the ball. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see. And then the Giants, see what they can do this year. Last year, they, they lost pretty much all their wide receivers. Yeah. Um, so they're playing with a bunch of ragtag guys, you know. Right. Uh, Sterling Shepard was the number one receiver last year. He's going <laughs> to move to the number two spot because Odell's back. I'm interested to see how Sterling does. He's one of my sleeper picks. Um, and then Eli's getting older. Um, you know, he didn't have a very good year last year, but that was also due to the fact that they had no wide receivers. So very intriguing yeah. to see how that plays out this year with the Giants. But again, I think the Eagles are going to run over that division. Yeah, um, I'm, I expect the Redskins to be decent, not great. Um, the Giants, I think, are a, a wild card for me in this division. I don't know. I don't They were so bad last year, right? So it's hard to see, like this crazy turnaround, but I know they've added in so many, so many more, uh, better pieces. Um, so I, I, I don't know what a, what a healthy Odell looks like with, uh, now a stud running back in Barkley. Um, and I mean, Eli's Eli, he makes some, he makes some good throws and then he turns into a, I don't know, a disaster, uh, right after that. Um, that yeah. Washington I expect middle of the road, the Eagles, I don't know. Like, I don't, I think I, I have to say that they're going to take the division just because I'm not a Cowboys believer. I'm, I don't believe Dak Prescott is like, I know he had a really good year two years ago. Upset a um, lot of people in the chat. <laughs> I know. I know there's so many Cowboys fans in there. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. But you guys know I've said that I'm not, I'm not shy about this. I'm not a Dak Prescott believer. Yeah. I, um, I, I'm on the same page with you on that. And even if Zeke is great, right? Even if Zeke is unreal. Um, your running backs ca- cannot outrun a bad quarterback. Like you need a quarterback. Trust me, as a Bills fan, um, <laughs> I'm tired of having the number one uh, rushing offense in the league and the 31st passing offense. Like, trust me, you end up not in the playoffs doing that. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I don't. We'll see. I mean, who knows? Maybe Dak comes out and gels really well with Allen Hearns, and you know, was able to hit some of his guys uh, on defense. They added in. Um, Van Der Esch, who I think is going to be great. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't, I don't know. Maybe that's a good, uh, if they can stay healthy, their big thing is, man, those guys have a hard time staying they healthy. Stay healthy man. They you know, they're them. already down Frederick to that, uh, you know, awful way to lose a guy. Um, Sean Lee, if Sean Lee can stay healthy, that's a big difference. Um, you know, adding in LVE, we'll see how he does. I mean, they're a wild card. They could do really well and steal the division. Uh, I just, I don't anticipate it right now. Who knows? I could be completely wrong in six weeks of like, wow, I was way off. These guys are really way good. Off. <laughs> but, uh, but I, as of right now, I, I can't take Dallas. I, I think I'm going to go Eagles yeah. again. Agree there. All right, moving on. NFC North. You got the Vikings signing Kirk Cousins. Uh, huge pickup for them. I still think Cousins is overrated. Um, it'll be interesting to see how he handles that offense uh vikings were a great team last season they had that Mm -hmm. miracle play to move on to the championship i kind of disappointed i really wanted the saints to go to that to see i think they would have knocked off the Eagles. but um you got the packers you got aaron Rodgers coming back healthy um you got the bears who just got khalil mack so that's intriguing mitch trubisky coming back for a second year um and then the lions who are always kind of like you know what I feel like they have all that talent on offense and they just can't yeah. seem to get it done every year. And it's right. Disappointing. They haven't won a playoff game or something like that at all Oof. or something. Uh, yeah. In the, the championship era. <clears throat> um, yeah, they've had, <clears throat> they've had a bad run in it, but I think the, 
it's going to come down to the Vikings and Packers. Um, I don't know 100%. if I have to choose one. I would say Minnesota again. Um, I think the Vi- or the the Packers are going to be right on their heels. And, you know, Aaron Rodgers is a phenomenal quarterback. He just got a paid. Uh, and then, I mean, they lost Jordy Nelson, but they still got Cobb. Um, they got a little stable of running backs and whatnot. So, and then defensively, they're still kind of, eh. <laughs> but yeah, I think when you got um, Rodgers on your team, you always got a shot. So, right. Yeah, I mean, I can't count them out. Uh, I'm with you. I think the Bears and the Lions are kind of afterthoughts in this division. Um, I mean, the Bears are trying to build themselves to beat the Packers. Right? Yeah. So that's I, that's what they're doing. Um, I think by the time they do that, though, Minnesota is going to be the team to beat, not the Packers. Um, so I think uh, the Packers are still really good and could do well. Um, I'm not a huge believer, though. Um, yeah. I don't like their run game. Their defense is, it's good. It's not great. Um, it's actually, I, I mean, their defense has cost them games before. That's why Rodgers has oh, yeah. to throw these crazy yeah. Hail Mary passes at the end of the games because their defense can't <laughs> stop somebody on one drive. Um, so for, I mean, but for that reason, I think Minnesota is a much more well-rounded team um, with Rhodes back there. Um, I mean, Diggs is fantastic there. I, oh, I yeah. think Minnesota has the division. Um, it's not a lock for them, but um, between Green Bay and the Vikings, I expect the uh, Minnesota to take it this year. Okay, so we agree on that as well. Um, moving on, NFC South. Um, this one's kind of a tough division for me as well. I mean, you got the Saints, obviously, with Drew Brees. You got the Panthers with Newton. They got Christian McCaffrey now, and then uh, C.J. Anderson running the ball. They don't really have any receivers, though. Um, right. You got Tampa Bay. Who knows what the hell's going on there? I think that team is a – a disaster um, with Cotter as the coach and then Winston just constantly getting into trouble. It seems uh, yeah. they have a great receiving talent though. Um, and then you got the Falcons who, you know, Matty ice, you got that, uh, you got Devonta Freeman, Tevin Coleman, uh, Julio Jones, and you still have a pretty good defense over there too. Um, I'm very intrigued to see how this division plays out. Um, I think it's going to come down to the saints and Falcons this season. Um, Cam Newton, I think, is overrated as well. He's very talented. Don't get me wrong. I think Cam's a good quarterback. He right. can sling the ball around. He's the best goal line guy you can have, I think, uh, as far as a runner. Um, he's he's hard to take down, but I just think he gets into his own head a lot. So, um, I think, yeah, I think the Falcons are going to end up winning that division um, this season um, and try and get back to the playoffs again. You know, just, <laughs> everybody yeah. always says that 28 to three I Super know. Bowl loss. It's so rough, dude. Uh, so yeah. bad for Falcons fans. Um, but yeah, I think um, the Falcons are going to take that division. Yeah, um, I, I agree. This is going to be a, a, a tough one to pick. I think all the teams in here are decent. Um, my, well, minus Tampa Bay. I'm not, not real sold on, especially with Winston being suspended for three games, I believe. Yeah. Um, I'm not – see, I, I'm with you on Cam Newton. It's not that I think he's overrated. Um, I can't get past his ego. Like, watching him uh, – his off-the-field stuff drives me crazy, and that makes me dislike him as a player and discount some of the stuff he does on the field. Like, you know I mean? That's something – I can't get past it. Um, so I'm not, yeah. I'm not a huge fan. But even as a player-wise, I think he – um, I don't think he handles adversity very well. So if the team starts going south or a game starts going south, like he kind of crumbles. Um, Super Bowl 50. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, between the Falcons and Saints, I actually, I think I'm going Saints on this one. I think that run game um, is it was so good last year. Yeah. Um, and I mean, Breeze can still throw the ball if he has to. Yeah, he's still sling it. I, like I said, it's uh, a hard to, it's a hard choice to pick, you know. It, yeah, no, like, this is a tough you can one. Flip a coin and be happy with either or, but right, right. Uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm gonna take Saints. I think the offense is gonna be once teams start. I almost feel like Sean Payton is daring teams to stack the box, and then go. By the way, Michael Thomas is still on the outside. <laughs> See you later. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think he's just waiting. Like, I feel like a lot of those plays are designed for them to go, come on, I dare you to bring that safety down. Bring him down a little closer, a little closer, and then they're just going to torch him. Um, yeah. So I, I think I'm going Saints. I think they're they're going to be in a good spot this year. Okay. 
Um, now the last NFC West, you know, uh, a couple of years ago, this is one of the hardest divisions in football. Um, now, you know, you had the perennial division winners, the Seahawks who have taken some huge hits on that Legion. Of yeah. Defense. Um, their offensive line is still atrocious. You know, you right. constantly see Russell Wilson running for his life. It seems, but he's so talented. He makes yeah. it work. You know, I I'm very high on Russell Wilson. I think he's underrated a lot. Um, I would almost put him in the elite tier. Um, really? Yeah, a hot take. <laughs> Man. But uh, but I don't think they're going to win the divisions here. I, I I think it's still the Rams are going to run away with it. That defense is incredibly stacked. They added Peters. They added Tlaib. They added Sue. You still got Aaron Donald on that team, Mark Barron. It's just insane. And you got yeah. Wade Phillips coaching it, who has a special place in my heart with that Broncos defense that he created a couple of years ago. So. Um, you got Jared Goff coming back for another year. You got Gurley. They got Brandon Cooks. And that team is just stacked. It's right. I think they're going to destroy that division. Um, you got the Cardinals signing Bradford, who, you know, competes against his own health. You know, can he stay healthy? I think if he stays healthy, the Cardinals have a good shot of making a wild card this season. Yeah. That defense looks really good. Um, you still got Patrick Peterson, who's being allowed to attack the the uh, the ball this year who you know when Bruce Arians was there they didn't let him do that so I'm excited to see right. what he can do they lost Mathau or Tyron Mathau to the Texans they let him go due to his injury issue mm -hmm. um, lost his swagger a little bit he wasn't really the honey badger anymore so that was kind of a big hit um, Buda Baker I think is going to be a huge stud um, yeah. in this league I'm excited to see what he can do I had him in an IDP lag year last year and he killed it for me and then you got the Niners with uh, Jimmy G coming back. We already kind of touched base on this. Uh, they lost McKinnon for the year with the ACL. Um, a lot of people are kind of high on San Francisco in that division. I'm not. Um, I think uh, they're just not going to be able to compete with the Rams and the Cardinals. Um, right. If Bradford can stay healthy. You got to put an asterisk there. You got David Johnson coming back on the Cardinals, too. I forgot to mention that. That's a huge piece coming back. They didn't have him at all last year, and it's going to make defenses <laughs> honest because that guy wants to. He's been very vocal about being a 1,000-yard rusher and a 1,000-yard receiver this year. Right. So we'll see if that actually happens. Uh, it's going to be kind of hard for him to do, but they still got Larry Fitzgerald on that team. They drafted Christian Kirk, who's supposed to be pretty good. Um, so, But, again, I think the Rams are going to run away with that division e <clears throat> easily. Yeah, um, this one this one's gonna be fun to watch how this plays out. Um, we said with David Johnson coming back on the Cardinals, I'm a huge David Johnson fan. Yep. Um, just watching him play, right? Even outside of fantasy, um, I, I think he's gonna be the number one fantasy player this year. I think he's gonna be the number one overall offensive player in the entire NFL. Um, he's so good, um, and part of that I think is gonna be to lack of other options on that offense. I mean, he. I, you know, like you said, Fitzgerald's good. They have a couple other decent, um, decent receivers. They can move the ball around. They, you know, they did it last year. They they moved the ball around pretty efficiently. Um, but David Johnson's so good. He he's gonna get the ball a, a lot. Yeah. Um, so like for him to do really well. Um, San Francisco with Jimmy G. I think last year was lightning in a bottle for the last five years or five <laughs> games or so. That five game win streak. Yeah. Um, I don't uh, I don't expect them to run away with anything this year. Um, I figure I think they're going to miss the playoffs. I think they'll finish maybe eight and eight, maybe nine and six and just uh, just be on the outside. Um, the Seahawks. I, I think they're going to be last in the division, to be honest. Um, or 12th. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I think you can't lose 40 percent of your defense and expect to be OK. Yeah, uh, I said they're fielding trade offers now for Earl Thomas too. Like they're getting trade offers, so there's no one. I don't even. I can't even name three players on that defense anymore. I mean, they still got um, Bobby Wagner, who's arguably one of the, if not the best linebacker in the right. game. I mean, they got right. a stud, but right. But he can't cover two wide receiver wide receivers streaking down the sidelines at the same time. True. True. Um, so I, that's going to make things a little tough. Um, but I think for this one, I think I, like you said, I got to go Rams. They are just so stacked on defense. It's unreal. Um, yeah, no, I think that, uh, that's yeah. a walk away, walk away win for, for the Rams in the division. Anyway, you could see a wild card out of the Cardinals. That's possible. Yeah. Um, the only thing I'm worried about the Rams is the amount of egos on that team. There's a lot of mouths to feed. 
<laughs> yeah, no, that's true. And, that's true. I mean, Wade Phillips did a really good job with it in Denver, keeping everybody happy. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why I'm excited to see what he can do with the Rams. Um, but yeah, I mean, you got, uh, what's his name? Sean McVay. Is that, that's the coach's name, right? And, yeah. um, he's still young. So I mean, right, right. To see how he handles all those egos. Yeah. You know, yeah. Keeps the, the, the locker room under wraps and, you know, and keeps the team focused, right. not make it more individual goal based and whatnot with all those players. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see how they, uh, how they shake out. So, uh, recap real quick. We have myself picking the Patriots in the AFC East. Kay, I think you agreed on that, correct? Yep. I did. And AFC North. I think we both have the Steelers picked, right? Yep. And then AFC South, you have the Texans. I have the Jags. True story. AFC West, we both picked the Chargers. Uh, NFC East, I think we both picked the Eagles. Yeah, uh, I can NFC see. North. I can see a wild card play out of the Giants on that one, though. We'll see with how many weapons Ooh, they have on rebound, offense. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, I well, could they got be... Barkley too. I forgot Barkley's yeah. a huge addition. Um, NFC North, I think we both picked the Vikings. Mm-hmm. Uh, NFC South, I went Falcons. You won Saints. And then NFC West, we both went Rams. So a couple of differences there, but overall we kind yeah. of agree on that. So there you go, everybody. Yeah, we'll see how those guys um, shake out. I know we got a lot of flack in the chat about the Cowboys. <laughs> Sorry, Cowboys. I, yeah. fans out there. <laughs> it is what it is. Like you, like Kay said, you know, if they end up tearing it up, well, we'll eat crow on that. But yeah, um, that's just the fun of doing predictions. So right. Um, okay, so moving on, we're gonna do move on to fantasy talk. Um, we forgot to actually put up our Twitter poll. Okay. Oops. Oh, <laughs> well, we can though. We can put it up at the end after the show, and then you guys can vote on it. We'll recap it next week or during next week's there show. You go. Um. So our question is going to be: Who do you take one overall? Gurley, Bell, DJ, Antonio Brown, um, or other? I don't know if we can have a fourth op- or a fifth option on Twitter poll, but um, K, you had the one overall pick yesterday in your league with uh, Trumpet Monkey and the director. Um, mm-hmm. I had the second pick in the two drafts that I've done, and I picked Bell in both. Um, So, chat, what do you guys think? Uh, Think about it, and then we'll throw the Twitter poll up. Make sure you guys vote on that, and we'll uh, we'll discuss it next week. I know a lot of people have already done their drafts, but... um, Yeah, so now it's a good time to take a look at it. Who who went, and who would you pick? Because mine were... I had number one yesterday, uh, but in the Almost Heroes League, I had the third overall, and in both leagues, I grabbed the same player. Yeah. A lot of people are, uh, yeah, and, you know, I think DJ is a solid pick. My choice, if I had the one overall, would be David Johnson. But uh, That's what like I went you with. said, I think he's going to be the top. He, two years ago, he was the best fantasy guy. Um, right. Scored the most points. He was a, just all around stud. So uh, he should be able to recoup as long as he stays healthy. Yeah. Um, KK, you wanted to go over who are the guys you want to take a look at <clears throat> outside of the first round? Yeah, um, I, we want to go over a couple of guys. Um, these are guys outside of your top 10, top 12, um, at least in the leagues that I've been in so far that, um, you know, they didn't make the top cut, but they're still really, really, really good. Um, I think that Deshaun Watson is going to have a phenomenal year. Like mm-hmm. he's going to bounce back. He's been playing. He's not wearing a brace. Um, he's uh, he looks good. He looks he looks really good. Um and then outside of Deshaun Watson, um, I went with, I, I think I grabbed Deshaun Watson in like the fourth or fifth, maybe the fifth round, which is early for me for a quarterback. But I think he shredded guys last year um, when he was healthy. Uh, defenses had no idea what to do there. Um, so I went, uh, I, I'm, I'm staying with him. Um, on the, my other guy, I think Tyree Kill is being overlooked in a lot of leagues. Um, at least the leagues that I'm in. I am so high on Tyreek Hill. Um, I know it's preseason and all, but this guy, you're talking to a guy that's putting up 80 yards and a touchdown in seven plays. The guy comes out for like two series, is putting up 80 yards and a touchdown. I cannot overlook that. I think he's going to be a monster all year long. Yeah, I, I know him well. He terrorized the Broncos all last yeah. <laughs> year. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to say. I mean, like, yeah, the, the guy is wick Tyreek Hill is so fast and you got Mahomes yeah. who can just chuck the ball downfield the only thing that you got to worry about is uh that O-line holding up and giving Mahomes enough time to you know set up that play so right um both good picks I agree with both of those um we'll go into the sleeper running backs um 
the two guys that I have pegged are uh, below Powell and then Royce Freeman out of Denver. Um, Powell is a pretty solid late round pick. If you're looking to fill out the, uh, the end of your bench and whatnot, um, he's going to be the starter for the jets. For some reason, he's going really late. Um, let's actually pull this up. Where's he at? Um, He's the 35th rated running back, but he's going, what is it, the 11th round? Yeah, so um, you can grab him late. I think he's going to be pretty solid. He put up some pretty decent numbers last year. Um, I mean, Royce Freeman out of Denver, uh, watching that guy through the preseason, he worked his way up through the uh, the depth chart. I think he's going to be an absolute stud. Elway's already said that he's a bell cow type. Um, mm-hmm. He's. I'm excited for Rolls Royce is what they're calling him. Um, so those are two guys that I would pick late. Um, if you haven't picked up Freeman yet, I know he – a lot of people have already done their drafts and whatnot, but if he's available, I would definitely pick him up and stash him to see how it plays out. Uh, Denver definitely made some improvements on that O-line. You got Case Keenum now, a quarterback who can sling the ball, so the defenses will stay honest. Um, I'm really intrigued to see what Freeman can do this year. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be um, uh, interesting. And then um, – Sleeper tight end picks. I know a lot of people, you know, kind of drops off after, you know, Gronkowski, Kelsey, Ertz, you know. Um, a lot of people, you know, I think struggle with the tight end because, you know, they're just not used as receiver types that often. You know, after those top three guys, it's kind of like, all right, we'll see what happens. You know, throw one in there and see how it goes. Um, but this year, I would keep an eye on Trey Burton out of Chicago. Um you got Nagy taking over as head coach there who came over from Kansas City. Um, he wants to instill the same kind of offense that they had in Kansas City, which they heavily used Kelsey a lot. So I'm intrigued to see what Trey Burton can do. Um, I think Trubisky is going to need a security blanket, and I think that's what Trey Burton's going to be. So keep an eye on him. Um, if you can, pick him up. And then uh, Njoku out of Cleveland, uh, I think he's poised for a breakout year. Um, I think Tyrod Taylor used a lot of clay when he was in Buffalo, right? Nope, no, not one bit. Really? I always Charles thought Charles Clay I was 100%. Him. No, Tyrod can't see the middle of the field, so Charles Clay was completely useless. So maybe I should take that pick back. I was yeah. I always pictured uh, Clay doing pretty well as a tight end. No, that's because Clay's on those highlight reel plays of those busted plays um, where Tyrod scrambles like and then he ends up being wide open. But the problem was he was wide open the whole time uh, and he didn't see him until he scrambled for 30 seconds. Interesting. Charles Clay should be a Pro Bowl tight end, and he's been completely overlooked for the last four years. Three years. Joku is the 12th ranked tight end this year so far, preseason rank. So, I don't know. I'm intrigued to see what they can do with that. And Joku intrigues me with his heart. His hard knocks stuff is pretty good. So, right. Um, I don't want to go based off of just that, but um, <laughs> Trey Burton, I think, is the best one to go after if you can't get Gronk, Ertz, Kelsey. Luckily, I got Kelsey in both leagues. I got Trey Burton uh, on the bench in one, so we'll see how it goes. Um, any other fantasy news stuff you want to go over? Um, I think that's it for fantasy. Covered everybody. Well, wide receivers. You got Shepard, I think, is a late pick that you can go with. He was the number one for New York last year, which I covered earlier. Uh, OBJ is coming back, so he won't be covered by the top uh, cornerbacks. So that would be intriguing. Right. Um, and then Edelman, you can probably get late too. He's on. He's serving that four game suspension, but I mean, he's uh, Brady's favorite target. I got him late in the almost heroes league, and I was pretty happy with that because I can stash him. Week five, he's going to come back. I got a stud wide receiver to plug in. Right, right. Yeah, I, uh, wide receivers. I, I don't know. I feel like outside of the top like ten guys, you can almost stream them week to week because um, there's so much um, variety in guys. Um, even like, you know, like I, neither one of us are real high on Miami, but somebody's going to catch the ball. And Devontae Parker uh, is now the number, the only guy there, really. Um, so he could be a late round, you know, like your last round flyer wide receiver. Um, mm-hmm. He's still there in the, you know, the 15th round, you know, could end up being a top 12 wide receiver um, if Miami's offense clicks and does well. Yeah, um, absolutely. Just based on volume, you know, just based on volume, he could be a, a top 10 wide receiver at the end of the year. Um, you know, in your last pick, why not, you know, go for a guy like that, that yeah. is you know, kind of lounging around. Yeah. You already got your starting lineup rounded out. Why not? You know, right. take a risk on it. See what happens. Yeah. I, th- I think yesterday I drafted like seven wide receivers because you never know who hits. 
Um, yep. The running backs are usually a lot more <laughs> set in stone. Everybody knows who the guys are. Just on volume, you, there's a, a limitation there. But on a wide receiver, you never. Some of those guys turn into superstars that you're like, you know, three weeks ago, you're like, I don't know that guy's name, and the next week, everyone's trying to trade for him or was wishing they would have got him off the waiver wire. Yeah. Will Fuller did that a few years ago. Will Fuller just like blew up on the scene. It was like, who the hell is this yep. guy? Ooh, 150 yards. I'll take that. Yep. You always have that. And then everybody rushes to get him in the waiver wire. And right. It's kind of hit or miss after that. Yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, okay, moving on. Um, we got the accountant with us. You guys know <laughs> Kay is the accountant. He's been dubbed the accountant for his market guru. Um, expertise in the Madden auction house. So, Kay, this is your segment. You do what you want. I'll poke questions in here and there and uh, give these people some uh, tips and tricks on how to navigate the market and trends, expectations, new packs coming out, stuff like that. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I think what I just really want to cover on here um, is kind of like a recap uh, of the week. Um the market right you guys that were in there um trying to make some coins this past week was a little tough you know with the with the awful events that took place in jacksonville uh last sunday um ea rightfully so slowed down any new content that came out to the game um and it uh for those of you no money spent guys just the guys trying to make a lot of coins that put a, uh, you know, that slowed things down. That makes things tough. It's easy to make coins when there's a lot of new packs, when people are buying packs and then throwing up the cards they don't want. That's where there's money to be made um, inside Madden. Um, we see our normal trends. Every So what I do, I track all the trends, right? I, I can't tell you these, like, there's no secret filters on how to make coins. There's no, <laughs> you know, there's nothing nobody else knows. Everybody, it's the same concept on how to make coins, right? Find a filter. Where you're seeing 59 minutes or better at the top of your screen uh, when you sort by newest and then find cards that are worth more than what they're being posted for. I bought an 83 Randy Moss yesterday for 250 coins. Um, but uh, <laughs> I have yet to get lucky on any snipes, man. It's been run of the mill, basic stuff, you know, make a, a thousand coins here and there. And then you guys get these crazy snipes, man. And it's, it's, yeah, that was the first good one I had all year, though. Um, but I was a fan of it. Um, yeah, obviously. <laughs> I was a little fan. Um, but yeah, so there's, there's no secret to it, guys. No secret. It's just everything goes in trends, right? So prices go down during the week on on uh, usually Wednesday to Friday. Everything drops right out. Yep. Buy a bunch of stuff then. Wait until Sunday or Monday and sell it for you know, a 40% increase. Um, that's it. That's literally all you have to do to make coins. You literally buy stuff. <laughs> when there are 7,000 coins, sell them for 11,000. Um, you can get lucky on the big ones, but there's so many people trying to snipe, you know, everyone's looking for, for Ramsey, um, at, you know, a hundred thousand coins. Mm -hmm. It's not happening. You're not, you know what I mean? You can sit there and refresh on that screen all day. You're wasting your time. Um, if you take smaller bites out of it and make 3000 coins here, 4,000 coins here, even a thousand coins here, and you keep recycling that as fast as you can. Um, you know, you go do that, then you go play a head to head game, especially right now it's weekend league, right? Go buy 15 cards, throw them up in your auction house, uh, go play your, your weekend league game, get frustrated, come back. And then you feel better because you got 30,000 extra coins in your bank. Do yep. that again, snipe for 10 minutes, go play another game, come back to 30,000 more coins. Uh, and next thing you know, you know what I mean? You're bringing in coins nonstop. So that's the only, uh, that that's how it's done. That's the easiest way to do it. It's the only way to do it really. Um, and this week was wild, right? With the the legend packs that come out. I mean, guys, Barry Sanders is in the game already. What a beast! We're not even at week one, and Barry Sanders and Michael Vick are in the game already. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like, it's crazy that they released those two guys already. Yeah. At, at this at this point, I'm expecting Ultimate Legends to come out by Thanksgiving. Um, <laughs> we're, we're just getting loaded up with guys. It's unreal. Um, but with that said, then they added in a new a new set for for Legends. If you add in three version. Or was it five? Five version one to three legends. You get a version four or five. Um, broke legends in the auction house. Their minimum now is always, yeah, Brian Dawkins. Brian Dawkins, too. Guys, Brian Dawkins, unreal. Dude, big fan um, of Brian Dawkins. Yeah. Um, but these, these new legend sets, they took guys that were going for like 11,000 coins, 12,000 coins, instantly overnight in one fell swoop, minimum 30K. Guys, people don't know this. 
Some people don't know this. This is what I like. And I hate to say this, but if you're going to go make coins in the auction house, uh, you make it on other people's mistakes or lack of knowledge. That's how you that's how you make coins in the auction house mistakes and someone's lack of knowledge. People don't know that. Right. And they'll go pull one of these legends. Legend bundles came out yesterday. Everybody bought legend bundles. Um, guys that didn't know that that uh, new set came out and that prices for an 82 overall legend card was at 30,000 coins threw him up for 11,000 coins you were snatching those up like crazy I know lots of people yesterday who made literally hundreds of thousands of coins literally just buying legend cards and selling them for 30,000 uh, so when stuff like that comes out like that's what you want to look at you want to go oop Giant increase here, like increases in the market are the best thing for you if you're trying to make money. You find cards that increased in price that other people won't know increased in price and go buy them for their old price two days ago. Um, it happens. You can it, you can do it for for everything. Like watch. Uh, it looks like team of the week is coming out this week, maybe tomorrow. Um, that's going to break some things. I'm sure we'll keep an eye on that and oh, see yeah. where things are going to go there. Um, and then don't don't sleep on. On tokens, guys, everybody's convinced that training points are going to drive the market this year. That's not going to happen. Um, just like every other year, tokens are going to drive the market more than anything else, especially elite tokens. Um, if something comes out, like let's say, let's say a team of the week comes out tomorrow and there's a set to do, you know, whatever, two elite tokens in to pull, you know, an 85 or better team of the week card. Expect every core elite player to skyrocket in price because now everybody wants to do that set um, yep. it's stuff like that where you end up seeing like a 20 30 percent jump on on your core elite cards um, so that's going to drive the market training points are not by the end of the year you're going to have so many training points it's going to be just like contracts have been in the past uh the first couple months i was like oh my god i'm out of contracts and then by i don't know uh by the super bowl time you're like what am i going to do with seventeen thousand extra contracts um, it's gonna it's gonna shake down the same way. I, I expect it to be nothing different. Um, so keep an eye on that. As soon as tokens come out, the market's gonna go crazy. That's gonna be your best time to make even more coins. I mean, we're talking like millions in a day, kind of uh, kind of increase. I mean, I had a pretty good day yesterday. I started the day at what seven hundred thousand or seven hundred k, and then uh, I ended the day at one point two million, just sniping all day. It was a, a good day in the market. Nice. Yeah, I so added all in um, your tips. K uh, is definitely helped out a lot. So good. It's good to hear. Um, yeah, I was able to. What did we build? We built Yanda, uh, OBJ, and Clowney's diamond sets uh, in the past two days. Uh, we started with I think two point six million, and after building those three cards, we're at two point five million. Um, with sniping in between, you know what I mean. We're flipping cards in between that, um, and we still have enough cards. To sell maybe later today maybe tomorrow but we should uh they have about another six to eight hundred thousand coins uh value sitting there waiting just on a hundred cards that's a hundred cards yeah. i'm waiting to sell for six hundred thousand um so that'll be a nice little jump then we'll decide build somebody else next week so but yeah that's your market corner keep an eye out for it guys we'll uh we'll post some more some more info yeah keep what's uh going on. each episode we'll uh Kay will do a segment on this so We'll go over the latest trends, uh, new packs that are coming out, any mutt leaks. Um, so yeah, Kay's our our mutt guru. <laughs> um, not guru, market, market, not mutt guru. That's a different guy. Oh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's a market, different guy. The accountant. <laughs> that's why he's got those coins on his desk, everybody. Um, yeah. All right, so that's uh, that's pretty much it for this week, guys. Um, we can open up to questions in the chat, and any you guys want to go over any questions you want to get our opinion on stuff like that so we'll take the the last couple minutes to kind of go over this um yeah, i feel bad I what do you guys of... got yeah anything saw... that uh back in the chat yeah we had one guy who bad. said uh witten is still on the cowboys but he's not he in fact retired he joined the monday night football announcement crew with uh i think bruce arians bruce arians joined it too um oh really they both so... did I believe so. I know Arians is in the broadcast booth, but I don't know if it's ESPN or not. Oh. Some guys are calling. They're expecting uh, Danny Amendola to catch the most passes at Miami. Um, I and I don't know. Amendola's a tough call for me. He's a. I'm not sure how he how he plays out there. I'm not high on Miami's passing offense anyway. Um, so 
I don't know. It's tough. I think uh, the knowledge between Parker and Tannehill will outweigh uh, Amendola. Amendola was good because he had Brady throwing to him. I don't know how he does yep. anywhere else. Um, who are you picking in fantasy? Next week, we'll go over fantasy picks um, since it'll be the first week. Um, so stay tuned for that. That'll be part of our segment. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll go over our... I want to do head-to-head picks next week. We're going to do head-to-head picks next week yep. um, and give you guys those, too. So we'll have head-to-head picks and then some kind of fantasy highlight, guys. Yeah, guys to kind of look for, play the matchup, stuff like that. Guys to pick up off the waiver wire if they're available. Um, yeah. who is How's this? the McCoy? How bad do you think the Chiefs will beat the Broncos? Uh, <laughs> they won't. <laughs> uh, that's good. I like it. Um. See, how's the McCoy situation? Guys, Shady McCoy, I don't believe, is going to have any, any, uh, I don't know, any repercussions for what's gone down. Um, everything that I hear here through the media, um, it looks like, looks like he's good to go. Looks like he is good uh, to go. Yeah, I, uh, McCoy's going to have another good year, I think. The guy's always a pretty solid pickup. Uh, Lost Peanut asked, who got the better end of the Hunley trade? You know, Hunley got traded from Green Bay to Seattle to back up Russell Wilson, who probably, yeah, I don't think Seattle even had like a solid backup. So good, good pickup for the the CLCX. I think they only gave up a six rounder for him. So Hunley did okay last season. Not the greatest, but, you know, he's not a starter. He's a backup. So just in case Russell Wilson does go down because of that porous offensive line. You yeah. Know, they, got, they got a pretty capable backup. Right. So. I think both sides, you know, Packers wanted to move on. They get a draft picked out of it. Seattle didn't give up much for him, so it is what it is. <laughs> Peanut says he would have taken a bag of Skittles for that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Rough. Um, anything else, guys? Are you playing that into me? I know, <laughs> guys. Uh, I think I'm going to take a break for a while, um, and then uh, maybe we'll come back in in about an hour and. Uh, Check the market. I got some solo battle stuff. I got another YouTube vid to make later. Um, so we got some stuff going on. We'll try to jump on and uh, and be back on there. All right, guys. Uh, that's going to do it for this week's episode. Follow K and I on Twitch and Twitter and YouTube if you have not yet. Um, this will be uploaded to YouTube on both of our channels, and uh, we'll do so every week. So um, let us know when we upload it. Any suggestions, feedback, stuff like that. We're doing it for you guys. Uh, any additions you want us to make, feel free to let us know how we did this week. So thank you for partaking in the first ever episode of the Sports Stampede. I am AZ Rhino. My co-host is Buffalo K. Um, appreciate you guys, and we'll see you guys next week. Ooh, wait, wait, Rhino. What, 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 we, we what, gotta, what? We got to do a double raid. Who are we going to raid? Oh, we're going to double raid somebody. Okay. Um, who's on right now? <laughs> I see no one on right now. It's Sunday yeah. morning. Everyone's asleep. <laughs> uh, let's pick a Madden streamer, somebody random. Uh, anybody in the chat got a suggestion for a Madden streamer? Who's got one? Damn, nobody's on Madden either. Um, I don't know. I don't know any of these guys. Do you know anybody? Edzo. No. Uh, Mr. No. Let's see. <laughs> it shouldn't be this hard to pick somebody. Chad, who you guys got? Pick. Give us a random name, please. Give us somebody to go raid. <laughs> love the show i know i jumped in late but i was listening behind the scenes thank you Vitty. nice Eleven thirty. not yeah it's not that early where is everybody today i don't know man um hit throne we can hit throne let's go see what he's doing real quick throne youtube All right, yeah, let's do that. All right. All right, guys. Appreciate you guys all uh, all coming out with us today. And uh, like I said, we'll be back on next week. Follow us on Twitter and Twitch and YouTube, and uh, we'll catch you guys next week. Have a good one.